The stresses that I describe are absolutely accurate, but they're not truth meaning. It's not the whole story, it never will be. So your lower back does filter into stresses related to financial matters, to survival, it most certainly does. Sciatica, absolutely. Pancreatic, the pancreas is absolutely involved in issues related to responsibility in the extreme. Absolutely. But, they, but you have to go deeper than that because you are more complex than that. You can't reduce anything to just that. And that's when I, I, I was, when I was doing these readings, I was in the mindset that itself was flawed. I had assumed that everybody wanted to heal, that everybody wanted to be fully healthy, that every, I myself was in a flawed, naive mindset. And I also was not dealing from the mindset that had anything to do with the higher operating principles of the universe. So I need to, pers put, to put all of that in perspective because if I do readings now, I, I, I position you in a hologram. My perspective is so intensely cosmic that the data I get is, it, it, all right, how this shifted and for me, something shifts in an instant, and I'm sure these things, ha these happen to everybody where the light goes on just like that. Now all of you have those light goes on moments, don't you? And look at the metaphor that we use, the light goes on. So later I need to, to do a lecture on what is light, what is darkness as two active principles of the laws. You, you must understand the nature of darkness as an active conscious principle. You can't say, oh, there's no such thing as evil. Yes, there is, and stop thinking there's not because you don't like it. Stop it, stop being children of Walt Disneyville. <laughs> it's obnoxious the way people are about that. You're damn right there's evil. Now. One day, and, and I, I wrote about this, this inner world really opened up for me in terms of the beginning of how, that this is our laboratory. This is our world of lead, where things solidified. This is our world of really our five senses. And, and you, this, this is a world that has a strong hold on us, even when you tell yourself that something in this world is an illusion, it's not real, but it is when you're in that world. It is, and this is where you have to be really kind and compassionate to yourself and to others, because when you're in this world, when you're at a burlesque show, that's real. And it's real to your appetites, and it's real to your body, and it's real to your addiction, and it's real to your cravings. Your cravings, what your physicalness craves, and what that will do to you. And I tell you the truth. If a craving has you, and an angel shows up, you'll take your craving. You will choose your craving. Or you will turn to the angel and you'll say, just give me one more minute. <laughs> so when you think about prayer and you think about what, what, why, why, why is this miracle not happening, you don't check your faith in God. Go check your cravings. Go understand the choices that come from having a craving that you are enslaved 
two. That you have to liberate the slave in you because it's stronger. This is the God you serve. And this is this world. And one day, as much as I observed this, one day I got into that world with the, the capacity to really, really kind of get it. And that was the day I was at Finhorn. This is Finhorn's my incubation place. I birthed sacred contracts at Finhorn. I got into this world at Finhorn. Finhorn somehow or other has the, the, the way that inspires me like no other place in the world. And I was in the dining room at Clooney, which is one of their buildings, and, and this, uh, I was with these two guys and we're just chatting away, chatting away. And I was waiting to meet a friend. And as we were talking, I see my friend coming up just as a guy named Eric was coming who used to manage this big building, Clooney, where all of the um, uh, visitors would stay and some of the members of the Finhorn community. So as she comes up, he says to her, I'm gonna call her Mary. Mary, are you free on June 8th? Because Helen Caldicott is coming to campus and she would like, we need someone to show her around. This is a yes or a no answer. Yes or no, are you free? But instead, what Mary said was, June 8th? Did you say June 8th? I don't know. Any other day, but not June 8th. That's my incest survivors workshop. And I would never, 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 no, no, support group. That's my incest survivor support group. And we would never, I would never not be there. And she went into this drama and I, and so, and here are two guys sitting here that she'd never met. I had introduced her, and now she's leveling them with this chapter of her history in which she's making it perfectly clear. I am a victim of incest. I'm angry at men. So you two better talk to me in a certain way. I take the lead at this table. Are we clear here? Are we clear? They were like this. All right. They probably have never been abusive to a woman in their life, but man, they are taking the hit. <laughs> so he looks at her and he says, okay, so you're not free June 8th, got it. And he walks away, <laughs> which is not the response she was looking for, I, I later realized, all right? So I, so she and I then went to lunch, and I'm looking at her as if she had just sprouted a, a coffee pot off the top of her head. <laughs> and I'm looking, and I said, I've got to ask you something. Why did you do that? Why did you reveal something so intimate publicly when you were asked if you were just free and available? Why did you do that? She looked at me as if I had the coffee pot. And she said, because I am an incest victim. And I said, well, I know that, but why did you have to let them know that? Why did you expose your wound? Why did you do that? It's like a wound flasher. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, um, she thought I was being absolutely cold and judgmental. I thought she was so defensive. And there was a break there, a serious break in communication. And I thought, all you want me to do is feed your dragon here. And I am so not going to do this. But it was there that my whole teaching on woundology was born. She, I credit her, 